everyone and thank you very much for joining me today. I was hoping to do some form of introduction video so you can get to know me a little bit better. Um, I'm, <laughs> like I said before, I'm completely new to this so it's definitely a little bit nerve wracking and a little bit weird but I feel like I've been lurking around on YouTube for way too long and it's finally time for me to actually add something I don't know what it's going to be, but I want to add something to the uh, witchcraft and pagan community that is on YouTube that I love so much. So I thought when I saw Owlvine Green, who is a YouTuber who I'm sure you're familiar with, and if you're not, check her out. She's fabulous, a huge inspiration of mine. She did this, what is your craft tag? And I thought that that would be a really good way for me to introduce myself to you guys. and. Hopefully we can get to know one another and talk about all kinds of different witchcraft, occult, pagan topics. Um, and I'm just grateful that if anyone is watching this, I'm grateful for you and I'm happy that you're here and I'm happy that you're you're with me. So hopefully um, this video will make sense, it'll be interesting, or you might learn something, if nothing else. Hello, and we've finally gotten to know one another a little bit. I'm not drinking fancy tea like the other witches. I am a coffee drinker. One thing about me is I'm not really huge on tea. There's a couple that I like, but it's not my favorite thing. My go-to is the magical bean coffee. So that's, I guess, one little fact, but that's what's in my cup. The first question on the tag is, when did you first know you were a witch? For me, that was when I was young, um, probably around, 10, 11, I really felt drawn to the nature, to the woods. Um, without knowing it, I was trying to make magic with my friends. I always wanted to play witches. And then the craft came out, of course, and that was when I was a little bit younger, but it just changed everything. Um, but definitely since I was young, a little bit before preteen years, I've always been interested in witches and the occult, the supernatural, since I can remember being a kid so it's been with me for a really long time how long have you been practicing I've been practicing for 17 years which is why I kind of feel like it's time for me to do something put myself out there share my knowledge share what I know I, I really want to be a part of the community you know what kind of witch are you I'm an eclectic witch I definitely don't follow any traditions um, I just go with what feels right I grew up, when I first found witchcraft, of course, like most people, I was drawn to Wicca, so I would call myself a Wiccan for many years, but now I just kind of go by the term witch. I use the term pagan because I do believe in nature and I believe in um, the gods and goddesses and all of that stuff, so I can understand and relate to the word pagan, but witch seems more like me. It seems more legit to who I am. What path or tradition do you follow? Just an eclectic one, my own. I'm figuring stuff out for myself. Is your craft devotional or secular? Um, I, it's, it's not devoted to the earth, I guess I would say, to sum that up. Are you a closeted witch or out in the open? I am way out in the open. I've been out in the open since day one. Uh, once I started realizing that I was a witch and came to accept that term, I've always been very open and when I was younger and learning about Wicca, I was honest about that too. It didn't always work to my advantage, it definitely caused some troubles growing up, but I'm very much someone who's true to myself, I like to think, so I've been up in the open for a long time. How do your family and friends feel about your path? Good, I have a lot of support. When I first started out, I didn't. From my family, from my parents. They didn't understand. I grew up in a Catholic household. Um, with parents, my mother was very, is very close-minded, I guess I would say. So it took a while for her to open up to what Wicca was, to what witchcraft is. And But now my, both my parents are very accepting, very, very accepting. Are you solitary or in a coven? <clears throat> Pardon me. I am solitary in many ways. I practice magic alone. I practice rituals alone. However, I do have a, there is a group of people that I do practice magic with. 
but in my heart I am a solitary so definitely if I was to answer that question truthfully I'm a solitary witch what is something you wish someone told you when you first started out on your path I just wish that someone told me that it was okay if you were interested in the darker side of witchcraft if you were interested in black magic or you wanted to learn about Aleister Crowley or Anton LaVey or read his satanic witch book I was met with a lot of closed minds a lot of hate um, which hopefully I want to do a video about someday is when I had a group of Wiccans do an intervention for me because they thought I was a dark witch doing black magic because I worshipped the goddess Nyx and I dressed in black and listened to Marilyn Manson. So, um, I definitely wish I could go back and tell little kid me, fuck it, like you are who you are. Um, and if you like dark magic, that doesn't make you any less of a witch. It doesn't make you a bad person. Seriously, fuck those people. What resource was the most valuable to you in the beginning? In the beginning, it was the library for me. I can remember going to the library where I live. We don't have a huge library, mind you, but we did have an okay occult or hidden knowledge section. So I found myself in that part of the library all the time. Now, my most valuable resource is YouTube. I love YouTube. I love watching other pagans and witches and Wiccans tell their stories, talk about their craft, talk about their journeys, share their books of shadows. To me, that has really boosted my connection to the path. So I'm very grateful for the YouTube pagan community for sure. What was your first spell and was it successful? It absolutely was not successful and it's embarrassing to even talk about it because it was a love spell that I did on the lead singer of Serial Joe. If you're from Canada and you grew up in the 90s, early 2000s, you might know who Serial Joe was. If you're not from Canada, I'm not sure if they really were all that popular, but they were basically a young rockish band. Um, just, yeah, I had the biggest crush on him. So I was going to their concert and I thought that I would do a spell to make Ryan from Serial Joe fall absolutely in love with me. Needless to say, it did not work. I burnt a hole in the bathroom in my parents' house and when I met him, he signed my poster and that was it. There was no love at first sight. What do you do when you feel out of touch with your craft? Um, that's kind of a hard question for me because I've gone through a period where I felt really out of touch with my path and I didn't really do the right things to get reconnected again. I just kept distancing myself and slacking off. When I got back into it, it was YouTube, so I have to go back to that, watching videos of other witches, watching you know, hearing other people talk about themselves and their paths and their journeys and that really helped motivate me back onto my own path. Have you ever doubted your faith in your ability? No, I haven't. I think even when I've had a dark time, I still have always believed that we all have a gift. We all have magic inside of us and I think that we all have that kind of ability. What are some grounding techniques that you found to work for you? Um, for me, that is going to the ocean and just being by the sea. I'm very fortunate to live by the Bay of Fundy so I can easily get to the ocean and just dip my toes in the Atlantic and it's freezing of course but it's a wonderful experience. So that is how I ground myself. The whole tree grounding with the roots never really worked for me. What's your biggest pet peeve in the magical community? My biggest pet peeve with the magical community is when elders treat young people like they don't know what they're talking about, like their experiences and feelings don't matter, um, when they downplay the experience of being a teenager studying witchcraft or the occult. I don't like that. I have a lot of respect for young people in the community. Um, young people are what keeps that blood flowing, keeps people excited. We need young people. We want young people to feel comfortable and welcome in the pagan and witchcraft community. Um, and I don't like it when I see elders treating them like they're children. It, it really drives me nuts and I will shut it down, trust me. What's your biggest spell disaster? 
I, well, Cereal Joe, I mean, that didn't work out, which probably is for the best, of course, but um, <laughs> that, as well as just I've had spells not work. Like, I've had things kind of, I've tried to do magic and it not work or, um, yeah, stuff like that. Nothing, nothing crazy, though. What's your view on black magic? I am completely comfortable with black magic. I think black magic is a wonderful way to vent feelings of anger, stress, hatred, um, envy even. I mean, there's a million ways. It's your shadow. Black magic is utilizing your shadow to help heal it, to help find balance. Antoine Ave, who is a big influence of mine growing up and now, said that doing magic is like, you know, if you go and you take and put all of your anger into a poppet or a doll and then you burn that doll or you cut it up or whatever, you know, that is healthy. You know, he said like, that's healthy. You're getting that anger out. Like there's nothing wrong with that. And of course that goes to say, well, what happens to the other person and karma? And I think that people bring about their own shit and if you send some energy someone's way, I mean, it has to be absolutely valid. I'm not talking about someone who just pissed you off at the grocery store, as tempting as it can be. Um, you know, it has to be valid. But if someone did something really, really, really bad and you want to send some bad mojo their way, in my books, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Is witchcraft an everyday thing for you or on special occasions? Witchcraft is a very much an everyday thing for me. I also read tarot cards. So when I'm doing that, I bring a little witchcraft and magic into what I do professionally. I also, every day, cleaning my house, that's something new I've been doing. Making special, my home, I can't talk today, my own like home cleaners and adding essential oils and herbs and trying to bring that energy in. I've been doing a lot of that. I'm trying very hard to make every day have some form of magic experience or that I do something magical every day. Do you meditate poorly? I suck at meditation. Do you practice divination and what technique do you use? I am a tarot reader and so I do practice divination. I don't really do much else. I'm interested in scrying. I'm too cheap to buy a crystal ball so I don't have one yet. But I definitely, um, I believe in divination and I do believe you can take a little peek into the future or get some guidance. So I, but I use tarot cards. I use a Rider Waite deck. Moon phases, planetary correspondences, days of the week, are relevant or key? Or irrelevant or key? Apparently I can't read or speak. Um, I think it's cool if you can do your magic around the moon phases or if you can plan it. But I also believe that if you don't have time or the need for magic is pressing, then just do it. Don't wait. I don't see the need for it. It's not really something that I think about. I think about the moon phases a little bit more than any of the other ones, but again, it's not a make or break for me when I do magic. Spell language. Do you keep it simple, dress it up, poetry, or silent? I actually prefer to be silent during spells. I like to just focus my energy. However, I enjoy chanting during spells as well, and I find that that is quite effective. Do you keep a book of shadows or grimoire? I do. I have my book of shadows here with me. I did a little video going through it and I'm going to do a better video uh, probably soon just with some updates and things that I've done. I don't keep a magical journal. I don't keep track of tarot readings that I do for people. I am a really shitty witch in that way. I don't keep track of spells. I don't keep track of outcomes at all. I haven't ever really. Maybe the odd one or two times when I first started. Again, it's just something that I don't find effective. It's not something I'm going to look at. It's not something I want to keep track of. I remember what works well for me and what doesn't, and that seems to work okay. I'm not saying you shouldn't keep track. I think it's a great idea. And if you have tips on how to be more organized or how I can do that, uh, please share them with me. Do you have an altar? I do have an altar. I have an altar in my bedroom, and then I have little altars all throughout the house. So my main altar to my divine matron and patron is in my bedroom um, and that altar changes sometimes. Like right now I have the altar set up, I'm looking at the altar. Um, it's set up 
as like a dedication to my shadow. So it's all the kind of things that appease to my to my dark side. I also have an altar behind me that you may or may not be able to see where all the plants are. It's an earth altar. I have a water altar over by the liquor cabinet in my kitchen. Um, air is kind of lacking right now. Fire is kind of lacking right now, but I do keep little altars around the house. Important, I think. It adds a nice mojo or a good vibe. Thoughts on the afterlife. Do we even have enough time in the day for me to get into that? I think there's an afterlife. I just can't explain it and I'm not going to try in this video. Do you, would you teach and practice witchcraft with your children? No. I wouldn't force them to do anything. If my children, which I don't have by the way, I have two dogs and that's it. Um, but if I had children, I would not force them to practice witchcraft. I would not encourage it unless they were interested. If they were interested, I would be all for it, 100%, but I never want them to feel like it's forced. Do you have a spirit animal or an animal that you connect to? So what is it? Uh, it's cliche, but definitely crows and ravens. I've always been drawn to them since I was a little kid. I remember in grade five, we had to do a project on a bird. We had to draw birds out of a hat, the names, and I got like the robin or something, and my best friend at the time got the crow. So after persuading her with some candy, she switched with me so I could do my project on the crow. Um, so definitely that animal and pigs. I have this weird connection to pigs. I love pigs and dogs. I have a major connection with dogs. I love dogs, all of them. What are some books that influenced you? <clears throat> there again, I will do a video, hopefully, if you like these videos, on books that have influenced me. The two that I decided to talk about today are probably the two that influenced me the most. So hopefully, I don't know if you can see this, but this is In the Circle, Crafting the Witch's Path by Ellen Hawk. She is this gorgeous, amazing woman. Her writing is poetic, it's beautiful. The book is beautiful. This is the first book on witchcraft I ever bought. I was probably 13, 14, pardon me. And I love this book. So this really is a big part of my path. I think it's out of print now, but if you ever see it at a secondhand shop or, um, out and about or online and you're interested in a good book on witchcraft I highly highly recommend this enter the sacred circle and there's a, a second part to this called the sacred round which is also really really good the second book that I thought about because I only wanted to do two which is really hard for me because I'm a major bibliophile um, was seasons of the witch by Gail Duff I love this book this book is all about the Sabbaths. There's my name I wrote in there a long time ago. I mean, it's old, it's yellowing. Um, yeah, this, I really, it taught me about the Sabbaths. It taught me, I love the Wheel of the Year. I've always connected with it. And the rituals in this book are absolutely beautifully written. I love them. Um, just the little verses, stuff like this. Her writing, again, is amazing. I highly, highly recommend this book on the Sabbaths. Tools, handmade only, natural, only need your hand, will, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I don't use a lot of tools, to be honest with you. I am not opposed to using a mug, <laughs> um, you know, for water. I'm not really big on the whole tools thing. I was when I first started out. I found they were very helpful for focusing my energy. I felt like I needed them. I spent a lot of my disposable teenage money on tools and things that I don't even have anymore. Um, now the only tool that I feel drawn to use that I like to use is the wand. I which I found it's a piece of apple wood that I was on a tree on the in a house I lived at a long time ago. So I do use that sometimes but I use my hands mostly. I think our hands are the greatest magical tool you could ask for and they're free. Do you have a magical name? No, I do not. My name is Tasha. My real name is Natasha, um, and that is the name that I go by in circle. I like my name. I've always felt very connected to my name. I know a lot of people grow up and they don't feel like their name matches them, but I've always felt that. I feel magic in my name, so I go by my first name. Favorite, season, fall, and winter. It's hard. I cannot pick between the two. Herb, lavender probably. I hate the smell of lavender, 
but I find it very effective and I use it a lot. Crystal? Meh. I don't know. I'm not super into crystals. I'm not big on that. So I think they're awesome for people that like them, but I'm not a huge collector of them. Um, amethyst I do use and moonstone I really really like and pearls but I don't know if they count rune same thing I'm not really into the runes tarot cards ace of cups I love the ace of cups it's very important to me in a tarot deck that the ace of cups resonates it makes sense to me um, otherwise I can't read the deck it's very weird I love the ace of cups the card of love and emotional healing and all kinds of good stuff symbol or sigil the pentacle is definitely one that I connected with right from the get-go so that is by far my favorite symbol and my favorite sigil is probably the um, sigil of bathment which I find a lot of power in when I see that symbol or I see images of bathment it just makes me feel strong safe protected those are the kind of vibes I get from that so if I was gonna protect my home I would wouldn't be opposed to using that um, other than that I don't think there's anything crazy. I like the sulfur symbol as well. I like the symbol of the triple goddess and the moon and sun symbol, stuff like that. But pentacle and the sigil of Baphomet would be my top ones. So that was all of the questions. I hope that I didn't bore you too much and I hope that this wasn't uh, too terrible and that maybe you got to know me a little bit better and I'm looking forward to doing more videos with you and talking to you and I wish you the best day. I hope that you are healthy, happy, and in a good place. Till we meet again.